Microsoft's build 2024 was all about developers. Developers. Developers, developers. Microsoft did touch on some brand new tech that we're all gonna get our hands on very, very soon. And it's gonna be all made possible with AI. Yes! So get ready for a future where Windows helps you create and it helps you game. And of course, it's gonna remember each and everything you say or see or do forever. Oh, is that right? Well, let's get started. We'll figure it out. All right, Gavin, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, just left the stage at the Microsoft Build Conference 2024. He had a lot to say about AI and Copilot specifically. He talked about their AI stack. We've built really three platforms. The first is Microsoft Copilot, which is your everyday AI companion. And we built the Copilot stack so that you can build your AI applications and solutions and experiences. And just yesterday, we introduced a new category of Copilot Plus PCs, the fastest AI first PCs ever built. Yeah, he got into talking a lot of very technical details. And I know we the word infrastructure is not something you expect to hear on an entertaining podcast about AI. Yeah. But just to very quickly and very briefly kind of explain what that was that they talked about. So Satya was out there talking about the farm to table approach that is their AI Copilot stack. I want to know which farm this is and who's farming for this kind of stuff because every word that came out of his mouth was like gibberish to me in some form or another, but it does get us to a place, the table Welcome that we're going to eat at. Azure Farms. <laughs> yes, Azure, A global yes. connection. We work with Cloodle. We work with Zingo. <laughs> we work with Blazow. It could have easily been a bit about like how crazy these tech names are. But anyway, sorry, yes. Farm to table essentially means that they want to be the whole pathway through the AI journey from the beginning, which is the raw material that will allow you to- The sorry, processors, the, the chips, is, the RAM, yes, the everything yes. in a server farm, a very real uh, digital farm, real farm, if you will, yeah. global locations. You know, AI has to make its way from happening in that cloud all the way to you asking Minecraft, how do I build a sword? Which that's is right, something exactly. we're going to get to. So that's what they talked about. And look, this was for the developers, we, as we said at the very top. So it was a lot of like API, SDK, tech developer word spaghetti. We're not going to touch on that necessarily because I think the most impactful stuff for you and I, Gavin, and for everybody watching this are the things that we're going to get our hands on that are going to enhance our productivity or our ability to entertain ourselves. And Microsoft did showcase a handful of those things. I do want to very quickly call at the very end of this presentation, they brought out Sam Altman and we were thinking, oh, is Sam going to demo GPT-5 or something exciting like that? And no, he mostly just did what you said and talked about how important it is for developers and kind of repeated some of the same talking points that we had heard before, including did not mention Scarlett Johansson, which you assumed he was not going to. But there was a pretty interesting demo that they showed right before Sam came out where they had a Microsoft developer show her phone at code that she was writing in the in the time and she got advice from this gpt 40 voice client so kevin scott then said it's something that they made last night and also the ai voice clearly yes. not scarjo seemed like a model that hasn't been as uh, thoroughly baked because yes, it was like exactly hey, i can help you with your code uh have you thought <laughs> okay. about adding an array to the end of it that sounds good <laughs> Uh, okay, let's jump into Copilot. And I think there's a yeah, lot let's. of Copilot stuff to talk about here. One of the big things that they just announced was Copilot plus PC. So, what this means is that Microsoft is working with a bunch of hardware manufacturers, including its own um, Surface computers, to bake AI into the computer itself. And, Kevin, I want you to explain to me what an NPU is. Do you know what an NPU is? It is a neural processing unit. It is a special chip that's designed to deal with the complex mathematics that are involved with looking up these vector database tables. It's a chip designed specifically for enhancing AI calculations and workflow. And the Copilot Plus PC line has a special NPU built in, which means when we talk about these features and we talk about the future of compute, whenever it's a Copilot Plus PC, what that means is the laptop that you're probably watching this on right now, because they won't be available until June 18th at the earliest, it can't run these things. You need that dedicated chip 
on board. It, you know what? I, I, I should take a step back. It might be able to run some of these things, but your battery would die just by thinking about running it <laughs> and everything would overheat and steam would shoot out of your computer. So you have to have a Copilot Plus PC for these things, but they took direct shots at Apple, yes. Gavin, by saying these new PCs are faster than Apple Silicon, faster than the M3s. The battery life is going to last forever on these things. And again, that custom NPU, that neural processing unit, is going to enable some features that you can't get anywhere else. And those same features are very controversial. Some people are getting very bent out of shape, including Elon Musk. So let's talk about the first one, Gavin. Let's talk about Microsoft's recall. I think this is great. Now, there are a bunch of like possible safety concerns and a bunch of possible privacy concerns. But the basic idea here is that there's going to be an AI on board your computer that is going to literally see and watch everything you do on your computer. Now, there's probably people out there who have been using private browsers for some specific things for a while. And those people may or may not want to be using these type of PCs. But the promise of this is that you can just ask your little AI assistant, hey, what was that thing I, I texted my wife about yesterday? And because it saw all this stuff, you don't have to scroll all the way back through your text to find it. We've talked about the Star Trek computer on the show quite a bit. That feels like another piece of the Star Trek computer, right? Yeah. These large language models are amazing and they have this kind of generalized knowledge, but what they don't have is knowledge of me. They don't have my stuff. And this feels like a relatively safe way to do this. But Elon, <laughs> Elon first tweeted... This is a Black Mirror episode, definitely t uh, turning this feature off, which, you know, fair which enough. Which you can, yes. by the way. Yes. You have full control over this feature. Now, I, listen, I, I value my privacy, believe it or not. I think most people do to some extent, but this is a feature where you're going to have to weigh the pros and the cons of giving your operating system, giving Microsoft the ability to crawl everything you see, say, or do on a machine, but you can. Limit the access by application. If you don't want your incognito sessions logged, let's say, or your Discord DMs, you can also shut the feature off completely. A friend of ours, Joanna Stern, had a great Wall Street Journal piece on this, and she searches for like a brown leather bag. And it goes through all of these images that it had grabbed of various websites where there was a photo of a brown leather bag. Now, nowhere on the site did it say that. The AI just knew, oh, this is a brown leather bag. So the satchel detection... Yes. Of this new recall feature is off the charts. Kevin, who That's knew that license plates and satchels were the future of AI? I never would have expected it. But after Google's event this week and uh, last week and this week, yeah. I'm now convinced what it's about is figuring out how where did I find my keys? That's what they have to figure out. How does an AI find my keys? That the was in the step? Project Astra demo. That was yes. in the Google Glasses demo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, where are my keys? Basically, any question that gets asked in an old 90s infomercial that's still in like black and white at the top, where it's, where did the soda? Uh, where are my keys? How can I, how can I fallen down? How do yes. I find my life alert button? Elon concerned folks in our timelines, rightfully concerned. Satya Nadella was specifically asked about this by Joanna Stern. And his response was, is that it's happening at the edge, which for all of you means. Is that like a, is that like a 90s bar where I go and like. Hang out with my skater friends. It's an alt rock radio station from the East Bay. You're listening to the edge. <laughs> no, what it means is that it, because of that NPU that we talked about, all of that processing is, is happening on your device. At least right. that's the promise that they're making is that all of those screenshots that this AI is taking and then crawling to figure out what you're looking at and what is being said, potentially what you're saying or what's being listened to as well. All of that is happening on your device. It's not being sent up to the mothership. That's at least the promise. We will yes. see what happens when this is all delivered, but th there is a case to be made that you can have an amazing piece of technology like this and still maintain privacy and security. That's right. So I, I want to talk about what some of the things that it promises also with this co-pilot uh, assistant. When this is another version of all the assistants we've seen, they did show a really cool demo of it being interactive with a Minecraft demo. Hey, co-pilot, how's it going? Hey, it looks like you're about to dive into some Minecraft. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make a sword. To craft a sword, you'll need some materials. Can you open your inventory? Just press E on your keyboard. You've got some sticks, perfect for the sword's handle. As somebody who's played games my whole life and somebody who is in the middle of playing Baldur's Gate 3, finally in Act 3, everybody, I finally made it in. I'm about 70 hours in. Um, who is consistently looking up, how do I solve this damn puzzle? Or how do I figure out where the hell I'm supposed to step on these stupid little squares that are numbers that don't look like numbers and they don't go in order? 
That's for you, Larry, in studios. I hate the vault puzzle, and I just solved it myself. The interesting thing about this demo was watching, basically in real time, having somebody uh, partner with you as you walk through what was going on in a game. I know online there have been a couple people that have kind of like said this might have been semi-faked, but it does seem like this is a usable use case of a real-time assistant. I listened to Sam on the Logan Bartlett podcast, which I recommend everybody. We'll put a link in the show notes to this. But one of the things Sam said in that interview was, you will have your GPT-40 assistant, in this case, Copilot assistant, kind of on while you're working so that you can talk to it and ask it questions while you're doing something else. It could just be a persistent thing in your life. And that's actually an interesting thing to think about. The always on nature of these assistants is going to absolutely happen because it will seem frustrating or annoying when you have to summon one yes. and you have to wait for it to wake up and come alive. And then it doesn't actually know what you were just looking at or doing. So you have to provide it context that will seem very archaic very soon, which is astonishing how quickly we're moving in that direction with the minecraft demo specifically gavin where they're playing minecraft and they're saying hey i, I want to make a sword and the person that's driving the demo is saying my kid plays this game but i don't know what to do i am not at all surprised that the ai can do that right especially when it's a microsoft owned property and they can feed all the data into their gpt 40 model the game changing moment is the fact that it is so deeply intertwined with that operating system so that it's there always watching, always yep. listening in real time. It's all built in, whether you're using that recall or you're using Copilot to help navigate you through a gaming experience or software design or taking notes on a meeting. Super, super interesting. And I would have never thought, Gavin, that I'd be excited for MS Paint again. So what they showed off with MS Paint was essentially live co-creation, right? It allows you to draw basic shapes and things into MS Paint, give it a prompt, and it uses AI to enhance your drawings. And this has folks excited again, like it'll be fun to create with paint. A weird sentence to be saying in 2024. I guess, I guess. What we always talk about is like, you see the research paper, like the research paper comes out and then to product pipeline, feels like it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Like the things that used to take maybe years to come to mainstream products now feel like they're coming in six months, three months, maybe even yeah. a month, depending on what it is. Kevin Scott really spoke to this idea of be prepared for how fast this is going to move. We are riding like a fundamental wave in, um, in the development of this AI platform where if you just sort of look at compute over time, like how much uh, GPU cycles or accelerator cycles that we're using to train the very biggest models in the world, since about 2012, uh, like that rate of increase in compute when applied to training has been increasing exponentially. And we are nowhere near the point of diminishing marginal returns on how powerful we can make AI models as we increase the scale of compute. He doesn't see any slowdown of the scaling laws that are happening with AI. And just for all of our audience out there who may, about, may not be that familiar, scaling laws of AI mean that basically there's a theory that the larger and larger these models get, the better and better they get. And a lot of people who are kind of like pushing back on AI or, or kind of believe that we're going into an AI winter, which is something that people do say a lot, they're like, no, it's not going to scale anymore. We're kind of reached the peak. Kevin, the this guy who is the CTO of one of the largest corporations in the entire world, says no. He says he believes it will scale significantly. And I think that's an important message to take away. Sam Altman has been screaming from the mountaintops the exact same message from OpenAI. Expect the capabilities to be unlocked. Expect the intelligence to keep going up. And some will say, well, of course he has to say that. He's trying to raise a trillion dollars exactly. or multiple trillions of dollars to build everything. And Microsoft's he's the hire so five. Who, he's got to hire five more giant stars to take the place of Scarlett <laughs> Johansson. No, five Where's more, Dwayne The Rock Johnson? We got to bring him in. five more all-star lawyers to just yes. settle the cases after they copy and paste all these personalities. Oh, that reminds me. I saw the craziest conspiracy theory, by the way, today, which was somebody, I'll find out what this tweet is and I'll put it in the show. Somebody said, maybe Sam Altman purposely didn't tell Scarlett Johansson, knowing that this would become a lawsuit because he wants AI to be regulated and to shut out the open source smaller <laughs> models. He's playing sure. 4D chess, man. That's 4D 5D chess. chess, baby. Well, the other thing is, last week we were screaming about their super alignment safety teams yes. being dissolved and disintegrated into a fine powder, and now we're talking about Scarlett Johansson in Minecraft. So oh, maybe it was a, a great move to have this hit on the heels of some big-name departures, but I digress. 
MS Paint getting exciting again because of co-create. They also showed off a couple other little NPU powered experiences, Gavin, like a live translation demo. So yep. you could be watching a, a cooking demo in a foreign language and in real time, it will translate that into your native language. They also showed off live descriptions. So you could be watching a piece of media and having a narrator sort of tell you what's on the, on the screen. Uh, amazing advances in accessibility, which are always great to see this technology unlock. Very quickly, one of the things they did is they brought out the head of Khan Academy. And Khan Academy, if you're not familiar, has been this really interesting company that for a nonprofit that for, I think, 10 to 15 years has been trying to start education online, provides free education. You can take classes, a bunch of different things. They're going to integrate a thing called Khan Amigo, which is basically... Go, they're going to make it free for everybody. And ostensibly, this is co-pilot for teachers. And that feels like it could be transformative. And one thing I constantly think about this, Kevin, is the hallucination problem. And I do think we should dive into this deeper on a future episode where we talk very specifically about how close AIs are to solving that. Will they solve it? I think they probably will. But this promise of AI versus the hallucination thing is something that I think is going to continue to come back until it's solved. Let's talk about the teachers who lie. Gavin, <laughs> why don't we digress for a second? Let's talk about Mrs. Johnson in fourth grade. She lied to my parents about this and that, and I couldn't do anything else. And I had to stay back in fourth grade. Just kidding. I don't have a Mrs. Johnson. I didn't stay back in fourth grade. In fact, I almost skipped kindergarten, everybody. That's how smart I was. So smart. So smart then and still smart now, <laughs> some <laughs> would say. We will have more, of course, on the AI for Humans podcast. We release it every Thursday. We do videos on YouTube. We do short form on TikTok. You can get our podcast wherever you get podcasts. So make sure you subscribe. It's free. Leave a comment. Give a thumbs up. If you like this, share it with a friend. If you hate it, share it with a friend of me. Please share it. Yeah. Please share it with the people you hate, especially. Normally our slogan is we love you when you love us, but also we hate you when you hate us. So it's a double whammy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye. See you in the <laughs> <Bye>. comments. <laughs>